you from? Uh, born and raised in Miami. What part? About Hialeah, Miami Lakes area. Yeah, what like what yeah. more? Because I'm from Lago. Okay. Um, it was uh, 154th oh. over by Royal Oaks. Yeah, that's way. That's that's further up. Yeah, because I'm yeah, from 68th. Okay, then. Yeah, I like HML, man. It was a good vibe. I remember we used to drive by Shula's over okay. there when you get yep. off the expressway, and I used to look at all the nice cars and stuff like that. You know, that's when I remember sometimes over there, like in downtown HML, like sometimes they'd have like, um, I don't know if it, it wasn't like a farmer's market, but they'd have, it was almost like a fair type thing. I'm not sure if you ever saw it, or but they used to have events on like the weekend and stuff like that, and we'd go over there. No, we didn't, uh, our parents didn't get out much. Eso. It was the whole Cuban mother... Sicilian father, you're at home, these are your friends, yeah. your cousins are your friends, <clears throat> you don't have any other friends type of deal. That's, I always thought it was interesting, our dynamic, especially us having, you know, because we were just talking about our ancestry right now, so much Sicilian blood, and you look at how spiritual those people are, you know, especially with the Arabic influence, North Africa, the evil eye. What was, how did your parents meet? I mean, you know, with like that dynamic of, you know, dad's like Sicilian, mom's Cuban, and then here we are in Miami. So they, my mother actually went to work for my father's company in uh, 1981. And that's how they met. She started working as a secretary, you know, fell in love. Yeah. 1983, I was conceived. 84, I was born. Yeah. So... What was the dynamic like at home? I mean, like, was there a culture shock? Did dad assimilate the Cuban way, or were we assimilating more dad's way? It was pretty much dad's way, um, culture-wise, religion-wise, Roman Catholic. Yeah, yeah, like us, uh, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, it was communion, confirmation, went to church on Sundays. Nice. Um, believed in Jesus, believed in, you know, the Holy Spirit. God as an entity, and there was nothing else. That was a that crucifix. Way no way, pretty much, yes. In every vehicle, in every room, um, no speak of anything else. Yeah. But being where we're from, you see things. So, like, what were your first, like, visuals or audibles of, like, Ifa? So, for me, I didn't even know what Ifa was until about 25. Wow. Um, yeah. Even being there. Even being here, being born and raised in Miami, um, I was very spiritual as a child and saw things, heard yeah. things uh, that my parents tried telling me it was all in my head yeah. and that I was making it up. Um, it wasn't until actually moving out of Miami, uh, moving up to Palm City, mm -hmm. um, where I had an incident that I saw my grandmother that I never met, my grandparents on both sides I never met, on my mother's side, uh, my grandparents died when she was 14. Wow. Um, both tragic deaths. Wow. And, you know, there was no speak of them when we were younger and we were growing up. And I had seen a woman that perceived herself as my grandmother, as a spirit, as an entity in the home. And my mother's like, there's no way you're seeing her. Until I made an action that my grandmother made at me when she was on the steps. Because it was a two-story house, a colonial. Yeah. And the action was literally holding <laughs> her shirt. And when my mother saw that, she freaked out. Because that's what she used to do to them when they were younger. When she was repeating herself and nobody wanted to listen to her. Oh, wow. And because of that is that my mother was like, all right, I need to take you to somebody. Let's call people in the family. See who anybody knows that we trust. And at 17 is when I sat down with a spiritist, uh, an epiritita, yeah. we call him, um, that was in West Palm Beach, actually. Okay. And she consulted me with a cup of water in a dark room. It was the first time I had ever had anything to do with anything of this. And that's when she, you know, starts like telling me what I had going on about my life about what I had looking forward for me. And she's like, one day you're actually going to be sitting consulting. I see it different. I can't exactly tell you how, because they're telling me that I can't, but it's going to find you and you're going to figure it out one day. And wow. at 17, I was like, I have no idea what this lady is even talking about. Yeah. Um, until, you know, further down the road, they came to find me. I was uh, in Navajo, down in Miami. Yeah, no, for <clears> sure, yeah. Uh, the discount store. Claro. 
pharmacy where a lot of Spanish people go. So I was shopping. A, it's a bastion of Cubanacity. It, like, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Die, you know, and I was, uh, I was 20, 20 years old. And this woman stops me in the aisle and she's like, Ochung's waiting for you. Wow. And I was like, I have no idea who Ochung is, but what does she want? She's like, she's saying that she wants your head. And again, having no recollection, no, no, any type of understanding of this religion or who Ochung even was, you know, my mother overheard it and she was like, let's go and pulled me away from her. It was probably two years later. Again, down in Miami, because we were living in Palm City at this point, yeah. uh, 100 miles north. For God, know, it it wasn't as populated is. as it is now. And yeah. There's not as much you know, spirituality yeah, very, as it is now. Very wooded area. Uh, we're in Presidente, another store. Another, another <clears throat> if you're not a Presidente, you're at, at Sedano. You're, you know. <laughs> exactly. Dale. And we're at Presidente, and this woman tells me the same thing. Ochung's waiting for you. Oh. And, you know, this is an era, 22 years old, uh, I would have been... Would have been about 2004, 2006. So there was no iPhones, no anything to look up in the spot. But when I got home, I did look up to see who that was. Um, the woman had told me if I would, you know, take her phone number and consult with her. So I did. Um, she consulted with the shells. It was the Dilogun. Wow, nice. Uh, it was the Dilogun <coughs> de Legua, which I didn't know who that was at the time either or anything like that. Um, Moving forward, she's like, you have to crown. I have to take you to my godfather in Spain. And they're going to pass you into Ifa, is what the shells were telling me. Wow. That was the first time I ever heard Ifa. I had no idea what it was. Um, I, you know, of course, went home, started researching a little bit. Uh, she had asked me, unfortunately, for a deposit um, to do everything. So it was $5,000. Yeah. Uh, I took, you know, the $5,000 out of the bank. I had placed it, went down, placed it to her home, placed it to Chungo, because that's who she was crowned. Um, a couple of weeks later, I'm calling her, asking, like, you know, how are we going to set this up? And disappeared. Ghost. Ghosted. Oh, um, bro. I go down about a week later to where I knew her home was, and I'm knocking on the door, and the neighbor's like, if you're looking for so-and-so, she doesn't live here anymore. And I'm like, okay. Wow. So, you know. Again, searching, trying to figure out um, what to do. I kind of let it go for a little bit. Uh, about a year, year and a half later, I'm in this store, a botanica, like many people know now. To me, it was all new, but they had a big picture of Ochung outside. And that's what drew me to it. Um, I walk in, I was buying some candles, a couple, couple things, and... A woman in the back out of nowhere, like a voice comes up and is like, don't let him leave. So I walk out, or she walks out, excuse me, uh, starts talking to me and is like, you have to crown, Ochung's waiting for you. And I'm like, here we go again. Heard like, this I, before, bro. No deposits, yeah, please. Exactly. I'm like, I don't know wow. if all these people know each other or, yeah, or what's going on, but it just, it kind of all kept on lining up. And she's like, but you're not going to believe me, so I'm going to take you to someone who is. Um, we set up that weekend to go down to Miami, and that was the first time I sat in front of my godfather today oh. <clears throat> in front of Ifa. Oh, yeah. Kendall Drive, 88th. I used to and, live over there. Yeah? You know, 107th, yeah. So oh, I'm okay. Like, yeah, yeah. I, 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 went to, I went to Miami Dade on Killian. Okay. So all yeah, that, yeah. by the it's hospital, all, all that over there. Yep. And, um, and I, he's over, he was over by Bahama Breeze. Oh, okay. Right there, right yeah, sure. Of, and I sat with him, and he consults me, and he's like, you know, tells me a lot of what I had going on. It was a bad real estate market at the time, 2009. Um, he's like, you have to receive your, your hand of Barula and your warriors. But, you know, you have a path to do what I'm doing one day. I'm like, well, what's this? Yeah. Um, he's like, let's just, let's get started with that. See your guardian, Oricha, is, you know, September 8, 2009. That's when the ceremony was for. Wow. Which happens to be Ochung's feast day. Yeah, yeah. Um, I received then, and... I came in Awafakang in my hand of Orula, Otrumun Odi. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Where he's like, Orula's word doesn't fall down to the ground. Wow. Starts going through everything in Maita, him, and there's six other Babalaos present. Wow. Um, and I remember them telling me, you have to crown, you know, we're going to have to check, see if you have to get scratched, and then pass the Ifa. And of course, the biggest question at that point is, how much? 
Claro, yeah, after, um, you get, after you get ghosted, you know? Right. And, you know, he told me the number, and I was like, it's a bad market, you know, of my work, my industry. And he's like, why don't we just, you know, see how much it is. Uh, I guarantee with a sign coming up and less than a couple months, the money's going to come in. Yeah, because Otrupondi, I mean, even in the part of like Isheshes where divination for money was done, exactly. it says there are hard times because that's where the hunter went out into the jungle and, you know, he was looking for the porcupine, you know what I'm saying? And it was, all, it was so elusive, but he had real great foresight there. Yep. And when he told me this, I was like, okay. <clears throat> and I kind of, you know, so hesitated a little bit. Um, but I was like, I gave him my word as a man, 25 years old. If the money does come in, I will come back and put it to you. Um, you know, I work in real estate, still do. Uh, in that moment, the market was bad. Bro, it was from one deal to another, yeah. to another, people calling out of nowhere, mm -hmm. things that, you know, I never thought was possible mm -hmm. would happen. Um, pretty much, I made more than I needed yeah. in six weeks. And I called them up. And I was like, I have the money ready. And he's like, okay, come put it to my file and we'll set a date. Yeah. And that's exactly what we did. And I went, I got scratched January 6, 2010, passed the Ocha, January 14, 2010, passed the Fa, January 20th, 2010, from one room to another. Aguato, aguato, aguato. Aguato, aguato, aguato. Oh, it was meant for you. And to, when things line up like that and they happen so quickly, it lets you know that all you needed was realignment. That's it. You know, and it was always <clears throat> right there. You know, a lot of people, they hear people like us, like being from where we're from, and they can't imagine how someone can go a whole lifetime and not know what this is. But it kind of reminds me, not the greatest analogy, but it reminds me of like back in New York where like, oh, you're from this part of Brooklyn and you didn't know there was a mafia. Right. And right. to be frank with you, like I've even spoken to my dad who's like from Bensonhurst and other people who are from certain areas. They're like, you really didn't, it's not like people are just walking around yeah. doing this all Publicizing day. You know, it. it's not like now where you might see somebody just acting a fool like back then. To actually see Ifa out there, like somebody doing something on the corner. Or, you know, I remember the drummings when all the doors were shut and people were sweating to death inside. There wasn't none of that. So you know, people get really uh, confused. I I'd like to delve into mom just a tad before we get into now Ifa. Sure. Do you remember what, what, what part of uh, Cuba mom was from? The Havana. Okay. But San Antonio, Los Baños. So okay. So very, very country. Yeah, a little bit more campo. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But um, you guys still had family over there when you were living in, uh, in Palm and yes. stuff like that? Yep. So when you're going through this process now and she's like, we have to speak to family and whatnot, I mean, did she know it existed and she was just a little more reserved, you know, just to respect the home? Or were, was it just, you know, they were removed? So I went through the process in 2010. <coughs> of Ifa. Um, of Ifa. Uh -huh. Of crowning <coughs> Ochung and then passing to uh -huh. Um It wasn't until mid-2012 where my father got sick. Oh. Um, and he had a little bit of an issue and I was like, you know, Papa, let me consult you. Yeah. So I sit down and I, I went to their home. I know it's against Hiro Soate, but it's my father. No, that's, that's all that's though. So oh, it's yeah. yeah, completely different. Claro. Um, so I go to my parents' home and I'm, I have my dad in front of me and I'm throwing the opele and he's like, what are you using? I'm like, this is a divination chain. This is how we speak with Orula, unless it's the Kings of Dafa. I was like, but this is how we speak to Orula. He's out of nowhere my dad's like well your grandmother didn't need that oh, i'm like no. what do you mean my grandmother yeah. didn't need this he's like she'd sit in a cup of in a room with a cup of water and tell somebody their whole life story with that cup of water wow and i was like papa what are you talking about we're roman catholic yeah like this is how i was brought like, up um, yeah <laughs> how is my grandmother a spiritist now and then my mother comes out and is like well you know, you might as well know at this point, too, your grandmother and your grandfather had received their warriors. Your grandfather was Cornel crowned. Um, this has been in us, you know, for many generations. Wow. Your aunt as well, your great grandmother. They were like that, that you man. Met. And all of a sudden now it's like it turned into just throw Catholic out the window because now we're the back whole home. family has been right. The whole family has been in it. They just tried changing it for the generation of my brother and I. It's crazy because you see how American people wanted their children to be when they immigrated, right? Correct. Like, you know, like when my grandmother came from Cuba and my grandfather from Puerto Rico, et cetera, it's like they learned Spanish by the grace of God, but everything was English, we're American, just trying to assimilate and, fin and, and fit the status quo. And then you see now where being ethnic is so cool. 
yeah. ethnic is so celebrated where before if anything was different it was uh scrutinized and oppressed yeah. you know how'd that make you feel to know that you had brought your family back it felt great. I just felt pissed off and they wouldn't talk about it, bro. <laughs> so many lies. They wouldn't talk about it, you know. So <laughs> for then. so many years. Now this was you, when we speak about grandparents. It was his parents or her parents. Both. So, so his as well. My father's parents. My my grandmother on father's side. Wow. So his mother. Yeah. Was a spiritist, and many people went to her in Sicily, from what I understand. Very spiritual and people. And would get consulted with her. She'd be able to tell them. You know, somebody would come to her door. From my, my father told me, they'd come to her home. And she'd be like, you're going to get pregnant in six months. It's going to be a boy. This is what you're going to name him wow. and go from there. Or it'd be, you know, in the times of the late 1800s, they didn't have phones or anything no, like that. No, it was all so, word of mouth, though. Yeah, uh, their children, somebody's child would be in the war or in the army. And she'd be like, no, they're still alive. Don't worry. You'll be hearing from him in four months wow. and be able to pinpoint exactly what was going on. You know, it was all, even back then, there was a trade. People would come with... You know, basket of fruits. They yeah, the derecho. Whatever, right. The derecho really yeah. meant something back then. Now yeah. we work on a different system, but the barter system was everything back then. Like, yeah. you know, if, if somebody brought you a basket of fruit, like, that's like, you know, that's honor. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, Absolutely. oh, you know, you help your mom from the grocery store. Like, certain gestures that we recognize having ancestors from that lifestyle. You know, but that that's a beautiful thing, man. And, and we were talking before we started, we talked a lot about spiritism. Yes. What were like your first experiences with like, and seeing that's in your DNA now, you know, where grandma was right. in a piritita, you know, all these different things. What was like your, because you talk about seeing her. Is that the same grandmother you saw in the beginning? Yes. Wow. That was my, it was my mother's grandmother or yeah. my grandma on my mother's side. Oh, okay. That I just, that lets you know how elevated she was already transitioning. Like, what were those first experiences for you going through like your misa de investigación and like, with these epititas, what was that like? So I even get goosebumps talking about it now. Yeah. My grandmother, my father's side, came through on my wow. investigation misa. Wow. And at that time, I didn't know who she was. Claro. Because my godmother in my uh, investigation misa and her godmother were present. And they were saying, you know, they were describing who the woman was. But again, my father was passed away older. He passed away at 86. Okay. Um, born in 1930. Wow. So... His parents were born in the late 1800s, wow. um, and there was no pictures of them, so we never wow. knew what they looked like. So, I had to, at this point, you know, throughout the years after already passing through everything, is when my father decided to let us know where we really come from and what our real beliefs were. Is where I asked for a description of how my grandmother was. So, come to piece it together. That's who it was that came through in the misa. That somebody just knew her by name, Maria. Where oh. it was Maria Hurujarello was her full name, but you know, it was the spirit that got the first name. I oh. thought Maria, it must have been Cuban side, mother yeah, side. Yeah, not realizing, not you know. Sicilian side, yeah. absolutely. No, and, and you know, you look at, and we were just talking about this. Um, as Baba Labo, when we look at Oromila's title, uh, Boni de Gung, you know, it, it, the word Egung is there for a reason. Yes. And um, Oromila would see the dead. You know, you look at Odus, like Ofumeji, Othruponyao. Um, how has that aided you as you've gone through your path? So I will say for many instances, even in which I know it's supposed to be separated or some people feel like it should be separated. Uh, I know directly in Nesheshi in Africa, the lineage of Ahwani Obimbola considers it to be like a higher priest. Yeah. If you're sitting with Ekule or doing a Dafa and Egun starts, you know, giving you messages. Yeah. Um, it's very controversial with a few yeah. people, but I believe we're on the same page with yeah, it. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, yeah, it's absolutely helped a lot because there are times where, you know, you're sitting and you're in a reading and also day. Especially in the beginning. Absolutely. When you're first starting. When you're first starting, especially. And like if I won't close and you're going through, you know, Ori, Ara, uh, you know, the head, and the yeah. physical body, the person's house, the person's guarding Oricha, yeah. if it's an Egun, whatever. Yeah. And at that point, you know, I feel like Egun does come through and will guide which way to go to finish the person's resolution, finish helping their problem. I've had so many experiences where, like, especially in the beginning, because I was a little freco. I was studying a little bit beforehand. You know what I'm saying? Like some of us do. <laughs> yeah. And um, I remember I'd be completely lost. I'd know maybe one, two things about a sign, maybe. Mm -hmm. And um, somehow or another, when I'd be done with the reading, the client would be satisfied. And I'd look back in the book. And everything I had said was right. the gist of the sign. Yep. 
So when you're a young at war and you're trying to understand what is this that took over me, you know, metaphysically. Right. And you, you get to the Odu of Ogunda Masa or Yekumeji where it talks about Elah, which is that spirituality that descends upon us to be able to make our conversation coherent. You realize it's nothing more than an Egun. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, the idea that the Bawalawu is completely meant to kill that aspect of himself off is, in my opinion, it's, it's erroneous. Yeah, because it's you're, you're, what are you without it? Right. You know, because the really good part of the reading is, okay, you know the sign, you know a good 10 things about the sign, and then I know where, boom, I, I call it the, the, the shots, boom, boom, mm -hmm. boom. And then you start just throwing things out there, and they start hitting crazy, and everybody else is in the room was like, well, that's not in the sign. Right. Everybody has their own book, right? So, you know, what do you think about brothers that are on that? Like, Egun, no, my wife is in a spiritista, she can't throw cards, she can't consult with the Brenda, everything, everything, everything. Yeah, I think they're they're very closed off to it. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of it has been because of probably their elders as well. Yeah, yeah. Tell them that it has to be separated. If you see, if you hear, you know, you can't pass the Ifa, you cannot be a Baolao. You have to stay as a spiritist or an oriate or whatever. They're just not open to it. And I think a lot of that has to do with like the criollo belief system yeah. where it's the, you know, the controlling factor. A little bit of right? waperia. Yeah. yeah. Where it comes out of Cuban and the machismo. And yeah. The, you know, I don't come oh, down. Yeah. You know exactly. what I'm saying? But my godmother wasn't playing that. Like I told you, I remember she told me, she said, if you're going to be a Baolao, you're going to be a Baolao of respect. You know, my regards to my godmother, okay. Dulce Olomidara. She said, the day after tomorrow, I don't want any... Confusion with you. I don't want any doubt of you. Right. You're going to sit in me, Saz. Whatever happens, happens. Just know it's whatever God wanted. And it got to the point where she was like, I'm not inviting you no more because ya tu no habla, ya, you don't come down. You you know, it's it's time for you to go. So sometimes you need that confirmation from these women or these people that are in that realm to be able to move forward because Urumila walked all the lands. You know, right. every time we talk, you always speak so highly of your godfather. Thanks. You know, um, He's a, he seems like a man's man. Yeah, he, he seems is. like a good time. <laughs> you know, I, I could see the fraternity within you guys. And, you know, what was that bond like and how did it strengthen as, you know, you go through your Ifa and what came after? So at the very beginning, since I didn't know anything about this, yeah. it was like, you know, you, you respect your elder. It's who he is. Um, he was a kid of Ochung as well. Oh, he I didn't know that. Chango. Chango. Yeah. Nice. So that kind of ended up working and ended up being my same path. Wow. You know, wow. Um, after I crowned and passed into Ifa and everything is that I started seeing how many similarities we actually have. Oh, sure. Um, you know, I'd go down on the weekends to Miami because I was already living up in Palm City. Mm -hmm. It was about two hours, two and a half hours away. But I'd stay with him, learn from him oh. as much as I could. Um, you know, that's the way things used to be. The way I still like to keep it. I know you kept it as well. Yeah, yeah. Which is you, you pass the Ifa and... Your your best friends your godfather. You stay home. You stay there. You try and learn from him as much as you can. You know, Osarete and Machito Adivina. Yeah. The youngest is always doing everything. Um, you know, at the time I didn't understand that. I just figured, well, I'm the one that's half Cuban, half Sicilian. You're the do boy. There, yeah, I'm you the do boy. Know, doing know, everything. Make a powder, talk. open a coconut. Ooh, right. You know, it's, yeah. it reminds me of Kill Bill, where the guy's like, "Go heat the water." He's like, yeah. "Maybe you should heat the water." He pulls out the sword. <laughs> Dude, yeah, because yeah. the old guys, because how many years have we fought? Does uh, have? Yeah, he's 33. Yeah, so he's old school. Yeah, yeah, so they were they were on that definitely. Yeah, know? and that's how it was. It was you know, uh, doing all these things at the beginning. I was like, oh, it's because I'm half Cuban. Yeah, you know, that's that's why they're making me. Yeah, noise. right. Mm -hmm. But no, come to find out, you know, with reading and studying, like you said, and we keep studying right yeah. every day. We don't sell barafun. Yeah, you know, shouldn't put ifa down or anything. You know, it's it just strengthened our bond. Um, for a little bit, he had taken off. You know, uh, he left to Spain, tried starting a life there, so yeah. it was a little harder for communication. Um, but I never finished any of my ceremonies that I had to, mm -hmm. knowing that one day, you know, we would reconnect sure. with uh, with everything else. And as soon as we did, about three years ago, that's where, you know, I went through and finished Kunado, Odudua, Loafing, yeah, and Grand Slam. Now, yeah, and now, uh, shortly, we'll yeah. Be by the time this comes out, yeah, <clears throat> yep. such an important uh, Orisha in your sign for sure. Yes, I got a question without details, sure. right? You know, <clears throat> for for brothers like us who haven't gone through it yet. Okay, what's Odu like? <laughs> what's the energy it like, is, yo? It's cool. It's completely 
different than any of our other ceremonies, nice. to be honest. Um, you feel the enlightenment, you that you're very spiritual as well. Yeah. It's it's a lot cooler than the feeding of a loafing in an ifa. Yeah. Like that times 10. Yeah, that's what's up. You really, really do feel it. No, it's beautiful. And, um, you know, they say the Baba Laos, after they go through that process, they walk on air. You know what I'm saying? I know as you're walking different. I <laughs> you, you stride, the stride's you a little different. You feel different. You do. You feel different. Yeah. And, like, the crazy thing is, like, we talk about, you know, spiritism as well and open up our OD, like, especially with my sign, Obe sure, Ori, Ogunla. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I even, there's nights where I even dream different, yeah. where it's like you feel like you're, it's going to sound crazy, and this is with no drugs or anything, yeah. <laughs> but it's like you feel like you're hovering over Earth, like yeah. it's in a galaxy, and you can see down and see everything going on. Yeah. And it's just, that only happened after Olofi, after Odu. Oh, that's awesome. Which is pretty crazy. I've shared this with a few other Omo Odus, and they've said the same thing. So No, I've, that's what I've heard. And, and then you look at why Oromila got with her to begin with, because Oromila had many wives. At the time when he marries Odu... He had 15 wives, you know what I'm saying? And they satisfied, him, they satisfied him in every way except spiritual, right? You know, and that's ultimately why he got with her because Olo Dumari was like, you got to meet my daughter, you know? And, and she only wants to be with a man like you because you're serious. She mm-hmm. knows you're all about her. And, you know, that's why it was such a perfect union. And she was the one who actually gave Odumila his children, you know? Um, you have a successful relationship. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You know, shout out to Susan. How, how important... I mean, you know, and we're we're gonna get in the conversation with her, but how important was it for you to find that other half that was gonna support you in this lifestyle, um, and knowing all the, you know, responsibilities and time constraints that it takes? You know, what was that like? A lot of failed attempts before meeting her. Yeah. Um, it was. This is probably one of the biggest things for anybody in this or wanting to be in this. Uh, no offense to any other religions sure. or anything, but it is very time consuming. Yeah. Um, Crazy hours. Yeah. You kind of have to explain that ahead of time. Yeah. Uh, sometime you're going celibate because of certain ceremonies. Yeah. Um, you're giving up your weekends for plantes. Yeah. Uh, giving up evenings sometime for a bows or so days. You know, so it's serving somebody, humanity. Yeah. It's got to be somebody that understands this and understands you know, what it's going to entail. Um, when we first started, she had no understanding of this religion whatsoever. Uh, it was kind of crazy how it all came about for her getting to know it. Yeah. It wasn't by choice. Sure. But again, uh, it was uh, an egung, a spiritual moment. Um, and that's kind of what led us to, you know, her wanting to know more about it being Southern Baptist and very different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wanting to know more about Ifa and like who her guardian Oricha was and what her sign was, uh, which kind of goes hand in hand of how she is. Yeah. Um, and then finally us receiving a duo together in matrimony and Ifa. Yeah, of course. If you will, which is more important to me than matrimony on paper. Of course. But, uh, yeah, she, she loves it completely changed. She's all in, um, and having a good strong up at the B in the house. When oh, it's you're, everything. It is. It's it everything. Really is. I say that way, you know, because sometimes, especially when you're swamped taking care of the world, you know, you, the home sometimes can lack thereof. Like you have your own personal things to do right. to be able to support, you know, your household, your spiritual community. And those days, at least with us, when I'm not feeling up to it, I hear it. You know, hey, you have a pending at bowl. Hey, weren't you supposed to give a rooster to Eshu? Right. Oh, you know, our son needs this and this, this, this. And I tell you, it's the most blessed thing because it gives you that strength. I mean, how beneficial has it been to receive that from Susan? Like, just, you know, you know. Compared to past exes where two of them thought it was the devil walking earth. Nice. Being in this religion, um, both of them Christian. If they see that, shout out to my exes. Word, word, word. Um, you know, yeah. my, my daughter's mother being in this, uh, not as far as she is now. But, you know, there is some misunderstandings there as well with putting time into this because it was time away from other things, you know. And that's really the, the biggest thing that anybody looking to get into this, anybody that's any fa, anybody that is a Bawalao, you're thinking you're going to get with 
anybody else in a different religion, it's just not going to work. It's, it's very improbable. I, I don't like to say impossible, but it usually ends up that way because it's just very difficult where in most relationships, hey, honey, I'm going to be out till 2, 3 in the morning. Not I'm coming back <laughs> smelling like cigar smoke covered in blood and urine. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, yeah, no, no, it's not happening. But with one of these kind of women, it's like, all right, see you tomorrow. Yeah. You know, and it's it's uh, it's the most comforting thing. And, and you, you know, you've been very blessed as I to be able to bring your children into yes. Ifa as well. I mean, you know, how gratifying was it to be able to take your daughter ultimately into priesthood now? You know, she's yeah. a whole young priestess, you know, she is. Yep. you know, what, what changes have you seen in her? How has she been getting involved? Uh, the best thing that we could have <laughs> done for my kid was her receive Hena Barula first. Of course. It's like. I tell everybody the hand of Arula, especially for a child, is like a life manual. Oh my God. Like you're able to understand them better, um, their do's and don'ts, kind of what to expect from them. Like she came Odura Bombeo. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, the queen that lost her crown. Yeah. This explains why when she's around other kids, even if they're five, six, seven years older than her, she's gotta try and lead. Yeah, she has or to edify her. Yeah, or she has to learn like to pull back sometime. You know, let somebody else take the reins. Yeah. It's not always her. It's not always her way. Um, but you understand that as a kid, you know, yeah. like, or your child, if you know who they are. Yeah. If you don't, then it's kind of like you're just taking a you're shot lost. at it. Yeah. And how are you really going to, you know, do anything with them? Um, I think priesthood really did change her aspect on a lot of things. Um, Especially with that Orisha. How yes. necessary that medicine is for them. Yeah, you know. she definitely is a kid of Elegua. Yeah. She travels the world. She yeah. can't stay in one place. Um, you know, she's traveled a lot more ever since she's crowned, ironically enough. That's incredible. It's she just really can't stay in one place. But she does do her things, which, you know, at ten years old, you would expect a child not to. Yeah. Um, take it serious, but I gotta honestly say she does. Um, you know, she remembers to put candies to them and everything like that, where it's a lot of responsibility for a child. You yeah. know, especially when you're, you didn't want this for them possibly until they were 18, yeah. but it was forced on them because Oricha came down yeah. and was like, hey, if you don't, you know, there's a chance you could pass away from a blood disease. Yeah. So you kind of run as a parent. Yeah. You know? No, especially, unfortunately, our community has taken a turn where we have to protect our children. Absolutely. Not everybody can handle <clears throat> this power, this influence in a constructive way. And um, especially, you know, you, such as yourself, I mean, you're active, you're visible. Yes. Um, you know, they say James Obeono, they know exactly who they're talking about. So, you know, that comes with its perks, its positives. But, you know, the more we're seen, the more notable we can become, the more vulnerable we become, you know, Absolutely. as men and heads of family. So sometimes we have to do it younger. And you begin to realize why in Africa, really, they, they do it, you know, at the ages they do just to get it out of the way, you know. And her attitude towards this faith is a reflection of you. Yep. Because if she didn't see you on it, she wouldn't be on it. You know what I'm saying? So that that's a huge accolade for you as a father and you guys as a household, you know. But um, we talk about you going, you know, becoming public, you know, being seen, having a spiritual household and whatnot. What are you seeing within our community now, James? Like, what are you noticing that are positives? And what are you noticing that are, you know, cons? Because I know you're a vocal guy. You're a man yeah. who stands on what he says, and that's why I respect you so much. Thank you know, you what are nice. what are, what are are some of the things? Well, positively, what are you seeing first? You know, what direction are we going in? Positively, I'm seeing more and more people into this. Yeah. I'm seeing many celebrities being more and more open yeah. about it, which is bringing more people in. Sure. Um, it's not as much of a secret like it was before, but yeah. I think people had to practice in secrecy because it wasn't allowed before. It wasn't, you know, many things like there are today weren't allowed before, especially in Cuba. Sure. Um, you know, there's, the positives are people do tend to look for spiritual growth, look for the development. Um, you know, many people, when they're sitting in Ita, I'm noticing they are listening more. They are paying more attention. Um, Everybody has their it was their taboos and everything like that, but you know most of the people that are really looking for it, those are the ones that really are willing to change, yeah, to be of like better character or what they like Ifa wants us to be. Um, on the negative side, oh lord, there's a lot of fakes. Yeah, there's a lot of ceremonies being publicized that shouldn't be. Um, a lot of people robbing. People left and right. And the crazy thing is we've been victims of it as well. I mean, Absolutely. you even telling your story. I mean, 
I I bought more nonsense for no reason based under the wrong advice. You know, probably in the money I invested in the things I didn't need, I would have been able to do the things I did need far sooner. Right. You know, so it, most people probably look at us and be like, wow, those guys never have been taken advantage of. But everybody mm -hmm. starts somewhere, and we definitely have. Yep. You know, so yeah, definitely. I mean, like you were saying, uh, there's a lot of a lot of connery going yeah. on. You know, and um. You know, I, I think a big thing with the faces of Ifa, what, what we're trying to accomplish is to show the complexity of the Ifa professional, the Odisha professional. It's like you were saying, you were in, you're in real estate. You know what I'm saying? Right. You have a healthy real estate practice. And, you know, where did that passion come from? How did you kind of fall into that, you know? Um, my father always bought and sold his own properties nice. uh, growing up. So it was kind of breastfed yeah. real estate ever since a child. Nice. Um, and I really, I got into it more like right out of college. I uh, was never a very studious person. Um, Which is ironic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Especially with your old dude being where study first manifested. Yeah. yeah. It was more, the funny thing, it's it's just like with Ifa, with the Patakis, with Odu, you know, you're, you're vested into something when you like it. When yeah. you're forced to study something, at least for me. Yeah. You know, certain subjects, science history, certain history, I yeah. didn't care for. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, there's there's so much. There's not enough time. No, not enough lifetimes. lifetimes. Yeah, right. To learn everything, um, and that's what kind of made it interesting. Is like, you know, you'll you'll study more what you want to. Um, with real estate, I just got into it because I had two choices: either become a CPA, a public accountant, oh. or an attorney. Or my other choice was to get into real estate because there's still some law and still some numbers. Yeah. Because that's, you know, the only thing I could really, that called my interest. Yeah. I guess I could say. And it was going to pay the bills. Yeah, sure. Now, how has you being a Babalawo helped you in that industry? Because, you know, when we're talking about real estate, a lot of people don't realize, I mean, you know, there's a lot of great things that happen there. But there's a lot of... There's a lot of nuances to that game, you know what I'm saying? And some of them could be viewed as unethical. Sometimes it could be really beneficial. How has it helped you as a professional being involved in IFA, you know, as far as your interactions with your clients or overall kept you within a line of integrity? So you kind of stick more to the moral and the ethic code, yeah. um, you know, the National Association of Realtors puts out yeah. because it's just like ICAFUN in IFA. You have your 16 mandates. That's what we're supposed to go by, and it kind of keeps it the same in, in real estate. I just try not to mix the two like some people, you know. Yeah, you don't show up with the biggie there to the closing. No, no, not at all. It might, it might, it might make things fall through. Yeah, know, depending it's, uh, on who's there. I've been questioned before on it. Oh, Lord. And, yeah, I get all types of things, like, are you a Green Bay Packers fan? You're Jamaican. Are you, yeah, you are know, you Brazilian? Yeah, are you, know. you? And I'm like, nope, none of those. No, it's just something my kid and I do. That's, that's it. it. We do a little bead work, you know, yeah. to, just to get through the therapy, yeah. Yeah. So you're scratched in Palo. Yes. What was that process like? That was short um, from passing from one to another door and sure. then passing to another door. Um, it was interesting in the sense with my spirituality, uh, it definitely opened up a lot more, giving possession to my ego um, with a position as that's all that really needs to be done because that's what he wanted. Yeah. Um, the first night after getting scratched, I will say it was probably the craziest. Wow. Uh, and I remember it very vividly, trying to go to sleep in my home. Um, at the time I lived alone and cabinet doors, all types of crazy stuff oh, wow. started opening, slamming. I remember the next day calling my tata. Uh, he's the bae now. He passed away three months after he scratched me. Yeah. But he was like, you're just going to have to learn how to control them. And you're going to have to tell them. That's what he had for you with That's the slamming cabinets. They like, were having a party <laughs> in the kitchen. Yeah. yeah, they just decided, to, you know, I brought them home with me and they yeah. were there. They invade, yo. And yeah, they really do. And, and you know, I've seen it with other people now, but at the beginning I had no idea what it was. You know, for me it was just a ceremony and going through certain cuts and that's it. Yeah. Um, not knowing what it really was, you know, but he was like, give them position let them know you're alive, they're not, and, you know, they're there to help you. Little by little, that's how it kind of started. Yeah. 
Now, you know, you, you don't fit the stereotype of the overweight Balao with the gold teeth and the <laughs> cigar, right? You, you know, you take care of yourself, you know. How okay. important how important was it getting back in the gym now? And um, how important has that theme in life been to you and uh, been able to strengthen you in, in more than one way than physically? So the weight has always been my release since I was uh, about 15 years old. Um, so for 24 years or so, it's always been like therapy, yeah. really. Um, it's a, it's kind of the same with Ifa in a way, like you put your mind to it, smack the seeds a little harder. A, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For me, it was always about like appearance, not wanting yeah. to be overweight. Like many of my family members. Yeah. Um, it's just telling you, man, it's too many carbs, bro. It's a bread Cubans sandwich. Too. Yeah. It's bread, yeah, rice the sandwich. The pancito in the morning, Vicky Bakery. No, every La Fe, <laughs> where we used to go was over there on fourth, bro. La Fe, the $25 special with the cake and the 75. It was crazy because I was like, yep. It was at least two times a week, brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's hard because when, you know, those are things of pride, right? You know, you look at it like, oh, we are, we consume patelito de guayaba y queso, not realizing that these things actually come from oppression. Yeah. You know, we look at, you know, why do we eat pork shoulder? Why do we eat the dirty rice with the, you know, the arroco moro? Why are mm -hmm. we eating the fried plantains? This is what was left over. Right as slaves, you know what I'm saying? And we turn it into something great. So it's a little bit emotional when you have to be like, hey, you're not supposed to eat that every day. You're not supposed to, you know, just sit around and, you know, watch uh, Caso Serrao all day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I remember when I started going to the gym and whatnot, they were like, oh, no, yeah, bro, they're going to kill you. They're going to start your growth. Yeah. Una etnia. You know, it's just, it's that fear, you know, just us trying to protect ourselves. But I think it's important, you know, as IFA professionals and, and being examples to our community, we do need to take care of ourselves. Orumila took care of ourselves. You know, they say Orumila was like the palm tree. He was tall. He was robust. He was in form. Um, and he was healthy and everything was flowing. So, you know, speaking of appearance, what does the beard represent? Brother? <laughs> I love it. You know, I'm a beard brother, but I, I want you to have a chance because people look at you and they think that you might be a misplaced biker. No. You know what I'm I've heard Arab. I've oh, heard man. All types of. Mm -hmm. I get to Cuba and they think I'm Muslim. Oh, when I yeah. Show up. They're it's like, like where's, the, Ku where's the Kufi? You know yeah. I mean? Yeah. Especially it was horrible last year, actually, with the bombs going off in downtown Havana and the hotel. Oh, talk about that. And my. I didn't know that. What happened? Yeah. Because so, the thing is, things happen over there and we don't hear about them over there. So yet. last year in May. Um, we actually get to Cuba and the very next day there was an, I'm sorry, four days later, there was an explosion yeah. in downtown Havana. It ended up being a gas line. That oh, that exploded. was the hotel. Yes. Oh. Everybody. I had God kids calling me. Oh, like, that was Bavino, terrifying. I heard okay. 300 people passed away. Something like that. Yeah. Eso era la Central, bro. Yes, like. absolutely. Uh, but the worst part is I, my godfather being the person who he is, claro. is messing with me. And he's like, you remember when you came in that they were calling you a Muslim, that they're going to come to the house <laughs> to pick you up. You're the first one they're coming to get because you have the beard. I they're going to blame you for it That's and take horrible. you in. And I literally for Qué four horrible, hours bro. during my ceremony was thinking they were coming to get You're me in the room. Because he was serious about Everybody. Everybody's going to jail. Dua, old do. Everybody's going Everybody. in. Oh, that's yeah, that's wild, man. But that I remember when that happened. So crazy because you know, it, at least people like us, when you know people over there, we don't stay in hotels. Right. I mean, we're right. usually at somebody's house, or yeah. if they've been able to create like an efficiency, mm -hmm. because we have that privilege to where we're actually able to experience Havana. Right. You know, and, and um. You know, you have other people that can only go on certain excursions. They're only allowed to go down certain streets, eat certain things. You know, they, they definitely don't get the experience the way we do. But it's really scary to think that you doing exactly what the government wants you to do, mm -hmm. you can be in peril. Absolutely. Especially over a gas leak, brother. Yep. And, you know, we like to criticize Cuba and, you know, anywhere else that could be interpreted as third world. This happens in New York, like, every other month yeah. you know what i'm saying it might happen in alapata like it's just these are things that are happening all over the place and um you know you look at government and things like that we're not receiving that closure and security like we used to you know you being american you being somebody that you know has achieved quite a bit of the american dream right mm -hmm. you know how do you feel about america right now especially having the comparable of us being cuban american and all the criticism, you know, our motherland gets, you know, where where is that balance? Um, it's we've done better, yeah, as a country. Yeah. Uh things are definitely changing. Yeah. I don't think for the better. I think for the worse. Yeah. Um, and it's almost in comparison, 
Only difference is they're doing exactly what Cuba's doing behind the scenes, if you ask me. Yeah, it's very covert, yes. very Machiavellian. Yes, and it's it's honestly no different. We're just um, surviving. We're just here under their thumb, yeah. and they're just changing the rules as they go along, is the way I look at it. What's next for James Obeono? Uh, receiving Obaloye. You excited? Yes. I heard it's good stuff, man. I've I have not read it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's yo. That's so funny because when I go to receive a deity, uh-huh. he'll be like, what, 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 "What's the gist?" I yeah. said, "I don't actually look. I try yeah. to. I try to still maintain because I remember when they when they jumped me in the room, bro. Right. I remember that moment when you yep. crossed that door." Mm-hmm. And there's fear, there's worry, there's courage, there's strength. There's mm-hmm. there's this sense of innocence and trust you have to have in your elders that I try to recreate as much as possible. Yeah. Because when you have all this sacred knowledge at your fingertips, it takes a lot of restraint to not delve in. Absolutely. Know? Bawalao, father of the secrets. Word, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, it's like we're not supposed to know going into it yeah. and what we're going to receive. Yeah. But it's like, like you said, when everything's at your fingertips, you kind of get a little curious sometimes. And that says a lot about the man who's able to constrict that and able to still respect the process, especially when we're living in a time where no one trusts anybody and everybody wants to know everything. I think it's important to have examples such as yourself where, you know, we're still, we're still growing. Yes. We're still yeah. recreating ourselves. We're still becoming um, so yeah, I think Babalu, especially, you know, with the, with the position of Oluo Popo being in your sign, I mean, it's just going to edify you that much more, you know, aside from Babalu Aye, I mean, you know, obviously we're definitely going to share the real estate contact. We want everybody over there, Port St. Lucie, South Florida to, you know, definitely reach out to you. Appreciate um, it. what else is going on? That's other than that, just growing the ile. Yeah, I think all of us are. Which is grown. Right? Every yeah. time I look, you got a five piece going on. Thank you know you, what I'm saying? You. Five piece, eight <laughs> piece. You and the brothers down there getting it in, man, spreading the word. It's yeah. it's really exciting because you become the Baolao of Port St. Lucie. Yeah. You know? For for the most part, many people it's uh it definitely has grown. Yeah. And in part had to do with my daughter crowning. Yeah. From what we were talking about before. You know, because before that I tried to keep it more towards for myself. Um, it was one of those things I didn't want to be a godfather, didn't really want the god kids, the responsibility of sure. it, you know, but it really took my daughter crowning and getting with my wife to realize I have what most people want. I need to help other people achieve this as well, like my sign says. And that's that's really what took me to it more. And then seeing... Some of the things that happened in my daughter's ceremony that kind of upset me. I'm like, probably a lot of people are going through this as well. And, you know, when you know how certain things should be and be done traditionally in the right yeah. way and, and you know, all of us trying to help other people achieve their best version of themselves, it just makes you do more. And then, honestly, every person you help, I know you're the same way. It's very gratifying. It is. And you just continue to do so and continue. And then you help one person, they tell five people. You know, it's just like anything else. A good referral goes a long way. I tell you, you are living your sign because Obe Ogunda is the stranger, <laughs> el extranjero, right? Yep. The one who would arrive in a land. In the beginning, they didn't necessarily accept him because he was so different. And then they made him king yep. because he was able to take them to a whole other level. Brother, I appreciate you so much. No, absolutely. Thank um, you being for Being on, me. I think, this is a fabulous episode. A bunch of people are going to get some real value from it. And uh, you're going to be getting some phone calls, so uh, take it off silent. <laughs> guys, nice. guys, nice guys, guys, before we get out of here. Guys, before we get out of here, put your headphones on real quick, guys, because guess what? What happened? It's time for some shout outs. Oh, you're wild. <laughs> I had to throw it on the show. Yes, yes. For Susan. Susan's like, put your headphones on. I'm like, what did I do wrong? <laughs> Man, this is such a great episode. James, you're awesome, man. You appreciate it? I thought it was great. Yo, the elevator music is on point. (laughs) All right, folks. All Uh, right, shout outs. We got the VIP members. We got XEMT. So that's X-E-M-T. Love it. We got Malachi Gaddison. Malachi, what's good? We got an upgraded VIP member. This is A. Gonzo. Oh, yeah, my goddaughter. We got Divine Destiny Healing. Awesome. Uh, We got Alashe Michael Oshusi. Nice, nice, and nice, Mike. Premium super fans. We got Ruben Loya. Ruben. 
living happily and Joya Brandon. So join the membership program for more info, free shows, all that jazz, baby. Boruboya, guys. Thank you so much. Until next time, see the light.